Evil Democracy 1932 is a political simulation that was recently released by Amherst Studio. And I'd like to extend my thank you to the development group for providing me a free key for a review and YouTubing purposes. And as usual, this will not affect my outlook on the game. The game is very similar to the preceding title, Evil Bank Manager. In fact, it, it feels it feels like a way less complex game and the scope is way smaller than the previous title so that feels like a downgrade and by managing it's a little bit of a stretch because we'll see more in depth shortly but there's not much we can do after a little while but when you start a new game you'll be offered three different scenario you can start 1932 in germany or in 1935 in the united kingdom or in 1936 in france essentially whatever scenario you pick will only have a uh, cosmetic effect of changing the party's uh, names as well as the world map when you go onto the world map you'll get different countries depending on which one you pick and while you select for a party you have a different level of stars that will indicate the difficulty of the game depending on that party because the the more fringe party will have a harder time getting elected than the more mainstream one which is uh, pretty understandable so you'll have to work a little bit harder to be able to be successful in the elections additionally each party will have an alignment from far left to far right but uh, this doesn't set in stones the dogmas you can use while playing the game because you can even though you have a right-wing party, you can go and select a very left-wing dogma policies to adopt and it will just take more time to do it, but I will take a look into the dogmas virtually. And the first thing I want to point out is I, I'm not sure the reasoning behind it, but if you look at what you're looking at right now, the, the entirety of the game is just a map and a, an office, so I don't understand why it's using 100% of my GPU at all the time, this just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, of course, the reason is that the game will render as many frames as your GPU can actually do. So if you have a high-end GPU, then uh, you'll get uh, way too much frames for what you can see, which makes no sense. It should be hard limited to 60 frames per second, as we really don't care about the graphic quality in a game like that. It's it's akin uh, as if uh, Excel was running at 1000 FPS. It doesn't make sense. It uses the resources on your computer for absolutely no gain. And when I was playing, my GPU just start ramping up the fans full spin and I got a, a Sapphire Nitro Plus. So uh, these fans just spin nonstop like crazy and it gets really loud. So at first I was suspicious of maybe there was some malicious intent behind that. Maybe a crypto miner will not be the first time. But I did a little bit of investigation and I found out that uh, it wasn't the case. I, I wasn't able to find anything that was that suspicious going on on the computer while the game was going. I didn't see any suspicious connection, just regular telemetry ones. Uh, so I assume at this point it really is just uh, the way the GPU is set to handle the frame rate. Uh, just renders too many frames and loads up the GPU to 100%. Uh, hopefully the development group can release a patch for that. They really don't need to render that many frames on this game. They can just really hard limit to maybe 140 maximum that will be uh, way better than what we're getting right now because I had to uh, set up a manual limit on my GPU driver to make sure that the uh, my GPU wasn't running 100% in full span speed uh, while playing this game which makes no sense but let's go back into the game that because that's what we're actually reviewing so the technical aspect is one thing but how does the game put out uh, with what it is as I said earlier it is very similar to evil bank manager Except in this case you will manage a political party of your selection and the goal of the game will be to get as many voters and sponsors as possible on your side to win the elections. So depending on the scenarios, uh, if you pick Germany, you have 150 turns before the first elections and you can go up to three elections. Meanwhile, if you pick the UK scenario or France, you have 300 turns to the election, but uh, you only have a single election. So once that's done, it's done and set. The way you can acquire different uh, voters will be mostly by creating a newspaper. So you can hire different journalists to do different tasks. Uh, it's, it's very easy for the management part. Uh, you find a journalist, you hire them based on the amount of money you have and how much you want to spend on wages. And then you pick the best stats for them to put them into performing specific actions. For example, you can use them to create a leaflet, 
you can use up to four journalists to uh, better the newspaper and then you can use additional journalists to create articles either uh, interview with your own leader <coughs> that will grant them stats boost when released or you can uh, use them to uh, slanders or um, find dirt on other political parties affecting their income and uh, voter support you also need to take care of uh, your leaders these are like um, important figures into your party uh, so you have different roles for each leaders and the more leaders you buy the more expensive they become and generally speaking it's very straightforward to understand what these leaders do you hire them depending on their stats again they have four different categories and uh, when you want to put them in a specific role it gives you more information when you click on them on what type of gain you'll get so you can use these leaders to a better again your newspaper by certain straight percentage or you can use them to uh, better the strikes or getting more sponsors or getting more money or just cheating on the elections it's very straightforward once you set the leaders into the different position they're pretty much set there for the game unless they lose loyalty and leave your party but otherwise it's it's very basic it's not very in-depth that portion uh, it's very similar to the journalists once you set them in certain position or certain actions uh, I tend to leave them in that position because micromanaging them is not really interesting or enjoyable in this game and it seems like uh, once you set them in the right place uh, they produce whatever you ask them to and it just works all right so we did the two thirds of the staff system that we have we have both the journalists and the leaders and we also have uh, just what's called the staff and the staff is basically agitator who are characters you can hire and then deploy onto the map i have absolutely no idea still after about a couple of hours of playing the game exactly what they do as a result and you can also have uh, activists that uh, according to the picture seems like uh, beating up uh, squads of uh, your enemies again i have no idea what kind of impact they have on the actual game when you deploy them but they're very expensive so i tend to not deploy them too much as i could not have a direct understanding of what they're doing it's not very clear in the game it doesn't really explain their role and how you should be using them and finally we also have a newspaper boy who you will be needing uh, they're called promoters in the game. You will need them to actually distribute the newspaper and leaflets that you'll be producing. Okay, so now let's go into printing. So as you are making a newspaper, you have your journalist doing all kind of stuff, creating articles. You'll be able to create a, a distribution of newspapers. So every so often, every five turns or so, you'll be asked to decide the amount of newspaper you want to print, the amount of leaflets you want to pr print uh, for that specific period and it gives you an idea of how many new voters and new sponsors you can expect from doing that action as well as the price and you can add specific articles that your journalist wrote that will uh, give you an indication when you select articles uh, for example if you will post an interview of a leader it will give you an idea of uh, how much point it will randomly add into uh, that specific leader in one of its four categories you can also put articles against or party affecting their voters and income for that turn. But yeah, once you have uh, found out about print maximum articles and optimal circulation, uh, you don't even have to do anything. It will, the game will just play itself, uh, I think, to the optimum uh, condition that it can actually output these new papers and these articles according to the money you have. At least that. I, I wasn't able to find something that was uh, more worthwhile balancing the money I have and uh, the, the gain I can potentially make from these different uh, newspaper and leaflet distribution. And I will finally go into the dogmas. So the dogmas are different type of policies your party can adopt and depending on your party alignment as mentioned earlier, uh, you'll have different bonus to research speed of these different dogmas. So now the dogmas, when you go into the screen, when you're allowed to find a new one, it, there's not really in much indication as to why certain dogmas are available and others are not. You only have some that are grayed out that you cannot research and others that uh, are le less grayed out that you can actually research and clicking on them if they're falling in the same alignment as your party you'll be able to research them in very quickly on only 20 30 turns and if it 
for example, you're a communist party and you want to uh, have the dogma, the better race of all, uh, it will take you 60 turns because it's a far right policy. And uh, different dogmas will give you a bonus and a negative aspect to them. So you can actually read them and understand what results you will get from the dogmas. But generally speaking, the dogmas don't really seem to have uh, much more impact than what they say. Uh, they'll increase, for example, your money and reduce your voters by a certain percentage or increase the amount of sponsors while uh, degrading the loyalty of your leaders. It's just a balancing act between having the dogmas providing the maximum benefits to you while minimizing the uh, negative impacts onto your political party. Additionally, even if you pick, for example, a far-right party, you can enact only left-wing dogmas. It doesn't appear to have any impact at all, except, of course, the uh, longer research time for these dogmas, unlike if you're going for something more aligned with your party ideology. And finally, the last action you can do is you can go into the world map and decide by different regions of the country you select, make demonstration for your party, you can make strikes for your party, and you can make protests for your parties. And these are pretty straightforward. You see right away how many voters and sponsors you'll gain from performing these action and the price. And these will also have an impact modified by depending on the leader that is assigned to strikes. And once that is done, then the game is very straightforward it just proceeds into uh, printing more newspaper organizing more demonstration and strikes until the election and once you get to the election I'm I generally don't understand what's going on I've been able to reach two elections and one I, I lost by a few percentage and uh, that was it I, I was out of the game after that I'm I'm not sure what happened there and the uh, second attempt I did to get to the election, I was actually uh, getting 38% of the vote. I had the majority of the votes, and yet I still lost. I'm, I'm not sure exactly why. All right, and now let's talk about the graphics. So there's not much really to say. As I, I mentioned earlier, uh, my GPU was working overtime to render this office and this world map. And that's pretty much it. That's all you'll see. You'll see menus and the office and the world map. So it's very, very shallow in scope on the graphical level. There's not much details, but it still looks nice. I still like the map. It's it's not that bad of a map, but there's not much interaction we can do with it. So I don't see really. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I don't I'm I'm a loss of words to describe the graphics of this game at this point. But uh, we can talk about the music a little bit more because the music is just weird. It's like some sort of uh, electronic music. I, it just doesn't match with 1932. It's just, I don't, it's, I'm at loss of word too here, I gotta say. I guess they had a good deal, a good package on uh, electronic music to put in the game. It feels like music that uh, you get uh, buying uh, Unity Assets games, you know? Uh, just a uh, Unity Assets dump. Uh, that's the kind of music you'd expect from it. But in this game, set in 1932... I don't know, man. I don't know, it doesn't fit the mood at all. And this is pretty much it for Evil Democracy 1932. Now, if you want of my opinion in the game, I don't think it's a very good game. Uh, once you're set into streamlining your newspaper and doing demonstration, it 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 just becomes a clicker. To be honest, it's it's all it is. You just click your newspaper, and actually, if you check in the optimal and uh, maximum articles, you don't even have to bother about the newspaper anymore. You just have to go every 20 to 50 turn to set up new protests and demonstrations, as well as uh, deciding on new dogmas for your uh, for your political party. And if you really want, you can go back to your journalists to hire new journalists that are way more skilled and way more expensive and just replace the uh, old stock that you have. And this is the entire game. I, it's very shallow. After two hours of playtime, I played enough that I've seen everything there is to see in this game. And it's definitely not a game that I can see myself going back to play just for fun. It's not fun at all. But hopefully you've enjoyed a short review of Evil Democracy 1932. 
And if you did, make sure to subscribe for more and go watch whatever YouTube decides is best for you at this moment. Thank you for watching and see you next time.